Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, I have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And once again, our customers have come through for us. They've delivered a, a DC case study. A rare and a beautiful thing. We always enjoy uh, troubleshooting and looking at DC data. Yeah, they're still in the uh, they're still in the field. Uh, they're, the word they're is they're that they're, they're dying in population, but we continue to see them performing and doing the job that DC Motors only DC Motors can really do. And this comes actually from a pulp and paper facility, and it was found given to us by a, a service group or service individual who goes out and does service work. So this motor actually is the here's the nameplate for it. Uh, anything step out uh, stand out to you right now? Noah? Yeah, something worth mentioning is you know you're dealing with uh, a different field voltage. So a lot of times there's a differential voltage to the armature versus the field, and uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, a lot of times you're using field voltage to you know adjust the speed control of the DC motor. Uh, in this situation, base speed of 2,000 RPM, it tells us that full field voltage. That's the speed you expect at full load. Great. So. This is for, and we use DC for speed control, right? So we would, Absolutely. we want to change time torque, this. Big yeah. time torque and modifying the field voltage is going to modify the speed. Right. So what is a dryer motor, right? What does a dryer motor do in the pulp and paper process? Well, we've put up a little, uh, a little slide here that shows you the, the pulp slurry goes in and, and plates out on this conveyor belt and maybe gets some water out and then it kind of forms and then it gets in, put into a press section. And, and the dryer section is what we're interested in here. You can see it goes through a bunch of drums, right? And there's probably air blowing through it, right? I can tell you this, this, process is so complex. I've got to see it firsthand and it amazes me that you can take something from water in the wire section and turn it into paper running through the dryer section. And there's so the complexity comes in that uh, not only are they applying heat and airflow, but but as they as this paper dries out, they got to change the, the tension on these drying motors. They've got to change the speed and it's just a very regulated process. Right. So if you lose one ability to have speed control, you could disrupt this whole process. Worst case scenario, you destroy that whole run of paper. And yeah, that could be very disruptive. So And expensive. And expensive, absolutely. So the technician goes in and, and you can see we have a baseline here, but Noah, over time, things are starting to trend in the in the negative uh, direction. Yeah, you've heard us say red is bad, and there's a lot of red on this page. And it's amazing because you look at the, the change in inductance, uh, millihenries, phase one to two on the field. Um, you know, that is just an incredible drop in inductance. Uh, it, pin, it starts to look at loss of turns in the field coil. Uh, and this is the direct, this directly relates to what you were saying earlier about the speed control. You start to lose speed control, and this is a big problem, specifically in a paper industry. You know, we're seeing it on inductance. We're also seeing it on capacitance. Why would we see it in capacitance? So capacitance is really looking at your the contamination level, you know, the, 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 um, you think about the dielectric uh, capacity of the insulation. If you're if you're creating or losing turns, which is likely due to you know uh, overstressing the insulation from heat, uh, you're going to start to affect your overall dielectric strength of the insulation itself. So capacitance, it makes sense to to trend that. Yeah, and maybe the length almost right. If you've if you've lost turns, maybe you're not getting the same circuit length. Good point. Yeah, changing the plate size as we talk about in capacitance uh, would be another indication of what are we actually energizing inside this coil that creates that capacitance value. And you can see here on resistance, it's changing as well. Right. We always have to be sensitive with temperature changes. You can see our motor temperature is changing. So one of the reasons why inductance is so helpful is the temperature changes the resistance. And if we're not paying attention, uh, we'll be misled sometimes. That uh, That's why we look at conductance. We compare the two, and we can make a very good logical deduction as to whether it's loss of winding or change in temperature. And that's why we measure and have corrected. Correct. So if you saw in there the standard test we didn't have a lot of uh, we we looked at the RTG but you wouldn't have said, you wouldn't have seen anything on that and now here's a polarization index of the motor in the circuit 
And would we do anything with this motor if this was the only data point that we saw? This reminds me of my days on a submarine when we were asked to save the world with a with a megometer and a, and a multimeter. And and again, this is a this is what I would consider an ideal picture perfect polarization index test. We always recommend looking at the vertical amplitude. We're up to about what thirty three hundred meg here, you know, three thousand meg. Uh, but yeah, this is picture perfect and not something we would take action on. So you can understand why when the technician was saying, listen. Based on that standard test, we need to pull this motor. And they were hesitant. They they were hesitant. They didn't really want to pull that motor uh, and probably didn't want to pull it until things started to go bad, where you lose control. That's uh, not the right not the right policy, but yes, happens a lot. Yeah. And so now this is the actual polarization index with the motor only. We've taken it out of the circuit. Big change here, right? It really is. I mean, other than that erratic value in the middle, which makes me think someone was shifting the test leads or something started nearby that motor, uh, look at the values. We're up to 30,000 meg now, which is 10 times higher. It tells you that, again, the motor itself, the ground insulation, is still very resistive to current flowing through it. Not the best uh, reason to take action. So they pull the motor, and you know what? This is the... Uh just the open view. We've removed the armature from this motor. Can you share a little bit about what you see in here? We can see the field coils, but what are the coils in between the field coils? Yeah, so we've got four, the larger, or the field poles, the larger poles there, and uh, in between there you've got these smaller inner poles. Inner poles are really designed to manipulate the armature reaction to prevent arcing and sparking at the brushes during commutation. Okay, anything else stand out? Uh, can you tell really anything from this view? Well, I, I, it does appear like there's some discoloration. We always wonder how much carbon dust might be floating through that, but uh, certainly sure. appears to be some discoloration. And now when we pull these out, we can see a broad look at all four of them on a pallet. Anything stand out to you here? Again, these are obviously aged insulation systems, but there's some that are obviously a lot more aged than others. Uh, specifically, the darker color makes me start to think that there's been a lot of heat provided. And if again, if our inductance values are correct and we're having to apply a lot more current through these field poles to, poles to get the same, you know, uh, field strength, then we're going to overheat them. And then this is really a close-up view, uh, and you can really see the the, th there's a classification for insulation, right? Class B, class F, class H. And when we exceed that, what happens? Well, the general rule of thumb is for every 10 degrees over the design temperature of that class is going to cut the insulation life in half. Mm -hmm. So we can see here that maybe we've seen that. And we saw it, not only did we see that visually, but we saw that with our data. It's, it's great to quantitatively link what's happening uh, because then you have actually measurement values to make decisions on. And if it weren't for this service company saying, hey, let's look beyond the ground wall insulation and let's pay attention to what's changing in the field poles. What's nice is to correlate that with operations and they say, yeah, we're starting to have difficulty in controlling the speed of this thing and they may have prevented some major loss by getting ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And so then once you, well, this is a, a picture is worth a thousand words here because, wow, what a difference. Those are pretty field poles. Very pretty. So we don't really have any data of them putting the motor back in and getting some uh, actual baseline data because that's what you would do. You would put the reinstall the motor and get a, base, a new baseline and then start the trend all over again. If we get that, we'll certainly share that with you. Uh, but until then, uh, we will stop this presentation as it is and like you said to be, to continued, be continued to yes. be continued uh as always i'd like to thank you for your time uh we would love for you if you have any data that you'd like to share with us or have us create a case study for you all we go into our class all the time no one and we ask them you know for for information for case studies to share with the group um, and we tell them, all you have to really give us is a PDP file and a story. That's all it takes. That's what we do. That's what we do. We'll do the rest for you. We'll create the PowerPoint. But all you need is a story. And a good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> right. We're looking forward to the, the retest on this one. Yeah. So we're looking forward to a retest on this one. And we'll re we're also looking forward to anything that you guys can share with us. So as always, stay safe out there. And uh, we thank you for your time. And we look forward to uh, seeing you real soon in the future. Have a great day.